Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This beautiful Sunday morning, Cafe con Leche. Here to you, we have a special guest, our first guest. Woohoo! Woohoo! We're so excited to announce Dahlia Madrid. Yay! Applause, applause! <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How are you? We're great. We're so happy that you're on with us today. And Dahlia does astrology. Ooh. She's our favorite astrologer. Yes. <laughs> so anything you need to know, you need to... Shameless plug, shameless plug. Yeah. What's, your, what's your Instagram? Yes, hold on. My Instagram account is uh, Dahlia Madrid, D-A-L-I-A-M-A-D-R-I-D. Dahlia Madrid. Instagram, check her out. She has really funny and innovative ways of like how your sign reacts to certain things. I always look at that. Yes, I know. Sometimes I look at that and I I'm like, that's not me, thing. but maybe it is. Maybe it's me, not you. <laughs> oh yeah. I love to put those on the stories to make people like also think, but laugh, mm -hmm. you know, and get to acclimated with their signs, yeah. with their sun signs. I think it's super cute. I love astrology. I mean, I've always been like me a too. fan. Yeah. I always, I mean, I'm a Sagittarius. Whatever that means to you, you're probably like, oh, you're doing like you're like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, um, Ascendant Aries. Is that? Yeah. Yes. So I'm like fire all over the place. I'm a Sagittarius too, mm. with a Leo moon. Oh God. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? I'm a Taurus, Gemini, Ascendant. And I only know this people because I've recently looked at my chart. Yeah. Otherwise, I had no knowledge of any of this. Do you like astrology though? I do. I like astrology. I think it's um, very informative. It's cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool when you read the the extended version of your chart and how accurate it is with certain ways that you are. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I read these things and I'm like, oh my God, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have either of you done your natal chart reading? I did mine years and years and years ago. But I honestly don't remember, like, a lot of the stuff that they said. So how did you get into astrology? Well, I got into astrology when I was really young in my teens. Mm -hmm. And my mom and my aunt were going to astrology classes. And I just wanted to tag along just to hang out with my mom. And then I started listening. And I was really bored in these classes. But obviously something stuck. Mm -hmm. And since that time all the way till now, I've been... Reading, studying, practicing, giving readings to my friends, family, and um, you know that's that's how it really started. Really, with my mother and my aunt going to these classes. So, is it like a family thing? Is your family into it too? Like, do they practice it? Well, yeah, my mom and my aunt. Well, my mom when she was alive, mm -hmm. she practiced, and my aunt as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, other parts of my, of my family, like they don't even know about astrology. Okay. So it it. I guess it's a, a divided family. <laughs> some know about astrology, others don't, okay. and some don't care about yeah. it, you know. Some don't really believe it or, you know. And when did you decide that you were going to start doing astrology or getting more involved in astrology? To do astrology um, professionally, I think this is something that has always have been with me and I thought about it and I thought about it and I think this is really the year where I was like okay I'm going to launch myself professionally mm -hmm. in, in a professional sense because you've been doing this for like 20 years yeah at least right? 20 yeah. plus years mm -hmm. yeah so and then this is the year that I'm like okay this is, is that it. in your chart that this was the year <laughs> <laughs> actually in my chart um it says that eventually in, in my later years how know, funny that I would be an astrologer wow and I never believed it I was like oh yeah sure whatever there's so many it shows so many possibilities uh -huh. so many things that I can do and this is one of them mm -hmm. so I was like okay this is it so for those people that are a little lost and don't know what direction to go in career wise or passion wise or anything wise should they consult an astrologer to check out what possible careers they have in their path? Yes, they should. If they are feeling very confused, mm -hmm. um, astrology reading, having a natal chart reading will give them different outcomes or different possibilities of different um, careers. You know, like it's not just set on one. Like it could give you like, oh, well, you can go into real estate or you can go into hospitality or you can become a lawyer. Mm -hmm. All these different things according to what your natal chart says. 
But it would give him like either different avenues or like, I see you doing this. I think you would be really good in this. Well, the natal chart reading is really a a possibilities of different um, outcomes. Mm -hmm. It's not, I wouldn't say, people use it as a predictive um, Mm -hmm. tool. But I use it more of different possibilities because at the end of the day, we all have free will. That's what I say. So, See, oh my God, no, <laughs> I'm s- no, no. This is this is how I see a natal chart, mm-hmm. okay? And you tell me if I'm wrong or I'm mm-hmm. like you know on the right path. Not not a big deal. You can, you, you can tell me if I'm right or she's wrong. You or know, or she's right. <laughs> <laughs> how I see it is like this is your map. Let's say, you know, like this is, these are the things that could happen. Like you can marry three times and you can have five kids, but I I can't tell you who you're going to have those kids with because at the end of the day, it's like free will, right? Like, you know, you can marry this guy. But don't you have the characteristics of the person in your chart? Like, can you tell that? Yes. You're right on track of what the natal chart is. See, I'm right. (laughs) We already knew that, <laughs> but we don't. We don't want to use it as a predictive. We want to use it more. At least for me, how mm-hmm. I use it is a, a guidance. Yeah. Um, something to learn more about yourself. Yeah. Things that are hidden within yourself that you open up and you're like, "Wow, I didn't know that about myself." Mm-hmm. And you can use it as a strength. You know, to to better yourself, to improve on your career, mm-hmm. your health, whatever. So it's the chart can tell you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. It can tell you. The characteristics of the people that you uh, that you may marry. If you're gonna marry like two or three times or mm-hmm. multiple times, um, you can figure out um, what are your strengths. You know, what are your weaknesses? Are you gonna be financially well? And if you're not, how can you you can use astrology to better mm-hmm. your financial e- economy? You know, by doing different mm-hmm. things. You know, if you're um, gonna have children, if you're not gonna have children yeah. or whatever. Because even I've heard like some like celebrities, let's say. That they say, you know, like when they go get their natal chart read, you see like on these shows or whatever. And they're like, oh, you're going to have like three kids. And they're like, no, but I already have two. And then there's always a question, okay, did you have an abortion or did you lose a child? And they're like, yeah. So it's like, okay, that was your third kid. That's the third one. So, yeah, like it always, it always comes up. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so funny. the natal chart can tell you certain things, mm-hmm. but you use free will. Yeah. And you can rise above your chart if you are conscious and, you know, knowledgeable about yourself that you can rise about above yeah. your chart and create something new for yourself not just if your chart says oh well you know you're gonna land in jail that is a possibility mm-hmm. well how do you counteract that negativity you start doing certain things to not land in jail mm-hmm. like if you're meant to be confined well confine yourself to a hospital become a doctor do research mm. you don't necessarily have to land in jail so there's things, do you think there's things that you can avoid? There's certain things that you can avoid. Okay. Um, it, again, with the knowledge, mm-hmm. you can avoid certain things. Like, for example, I know of this person who was, uh, they read their chart, right? And they said, once this person lands in jail, they will continue to land in jail uh, and they'll live in jail for the rest of their life. Oh, man. So how could we counteract that? We could have guide this person into doing more research. We could have guide them into Did doing that happen? Did that yeah actually happen? yes this person landed in jail and then later on it was petty theft and then afterwards um landed in jail for murder oh and God. is now in, in jail and probably it's going to be life so they're still in trial but that was something that was told to this person from a very young age but he didn't have the guidance you know, they they didn't guide him into, well, you know, this is what's going to happen. Let's let's get you into things that may confine you, but in a positive way. Like you do research or you could do um, coding. Coding requires a lot of time and effort behind a computer and you're confined mm-hmm. to the desk. Oh, a doctor. I think we could say that about all nine to fives. <laughs> <laughs> We're all chained to the desk. You're We're all, all confined. in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there's different things that the the natal chart can tell you. Also, one one thing that one of my astrologers told me was this: nobody knows, and now people are gonna know. But it said of the things that I like, I like fur coats. Nobody really knows that. I've never told anybody that, but mm-hmm. I like fur. He's like, hey. I knew that. <laughs> 
you like dead animals. On your, <laughs> that's how he explained it. You like dead animals on yourself. I was like, what? And then he's like, what kind of hell <laughs> rating is this? And he's like, fur. That's what I mean. Fur is dead animals on yourself. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, yes. But I don't own fur. Okay, so <laughs> don't kill me out there. So fur. PETA. We we still love you. We're still PETA for PETA. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's how I see like a NATO chart. And that's how I would use it. Kind of like, yeah, like a guide. Okay, this could happen. So you could avoid by doing this, this or that. Or, I mean, I think everybody, how many times a day do you get asked, who am I going to marry? Does this person like me? Is he the one? Is she the one? Definitely. I do get like, oh, can you look at his chart? Tell tell me. Are we meant this? to be together forever? Yes. I, I get those type of questions. It's called synastry where you add one chart of one person and mm-hmm. um, person A and then person B and you put them on top of each other and you see how they affect. Then there's another one called composite chart which is all about the relationship. How, what's the flavor of the relationship? Is it intense? Is it emotional? Mm-hmm. Is it combative? Is it nice? You know, it, that's the, the mm-hmm. composite. So which is the chart that, and I think I know the answer, that most people <laughs> ask you about? The, well, when they want to know about certain events, what they want is a needle with a transit. And hmm. um, what do you mean by certain events? Like when they're going to get married, when they're going to mm-hmm. have a business? Or... Yeah, when they're going to get married, okay. when they're going to have kids. Okay. Um, uh, are they going to pass the test? Are they going to do well on on, on a test? Or um, Either they, like in trial, are they going to win the yeah, trial? Yeah, are they going to win the trial? Like that. Okay. that you want to use as a transit um, chart. Um, to see how you've progressed in this life and where you are today, you want to look at a progress chart. Okay. And that has more to do with how you've grown and where you're really at today. So why don't you explain to our listeners what a transit is, what a sextile is. Oh my God, when I heard that word, my antennas went up. I need up. that. I need that I chart. was like, sextile? <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. So why don't you explain it to everybody? Okay, a transit is... Um, one of the planets, it's the current plans going on right now and how they affect your personal needle chart. For example, now we have Jupiter in Sagittarius. So that's transiting outside okay. the your chart right now. So wherever you have Sagittarius on your chart, that's where Jupiter is and that's where it's going to affect you in that chart. So for example, for me, my Jupiter is landing on my sixth house. So I am overwhelmed with a lot of work a lot of projects and it's just a lot like jupiter is just think of jupiter as santa claus he's a big fat guy that brings you a lot of presents (laughs) but with a lot of presents also means it's not that good either because you're being overwhelmed so what's your sixth house what's the sixth house what rules the sixth house the sixth house is all about the work Mm. about the routines about your health your pets so you want to look into that medicine um that's that's what the sixth house means. Now you mentioned, Jeanette, you mentioned about sextile, and sextile in astrology is an aspect. So there's several aspects. There's conjunction. There's oppositions. There's squares. There's sextiles, semi sextiles. But the main ones are really conjunction, opposition, squares. Those are the the, the major ones you want to see. Trines as well. But the sextile have anything to do with X E X? No, no, but it it means it's an opportunity. It's a very good aspect. Oh, oh, chicky bow bow. Yeah, I've heard that too. When I I, going back, so when I heard the sextile, because I was listening to some astrologer on YouTube confession, and um, and I heard this, and we cheated on you. Goodness, I was like, what does this mean? I like this word sextile. But when somebody Not asks, sex. <laughs> well, you do like sex. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, please. I will reserve comments. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Um, but when somebody asks you, like, okay, I want to do my chart with the transit, they don't know what transit to ask or whatever. Like, what do you? If if I'm doing a reading with the transits, I try to hit the main points and I try to hit the ones that are that last the longest, like. Neptune lasts 14 years. Pluto Jesus stands Christ. anywhere from 14 to 21 years. It's, that's a really long transit. And 
Jupiter lasts every year that moves mm -hmm. into the next house. So by, by this year, October, November, Jupiter's already in Capricorn. So Jupiter lasts in every house one year. Mm. So I look at those. So then when somebody asks you for like a chart, I want a chart with a transit. So then, I don't think anybody asked that, right? No, they that's don't. That's already in the chart. No, right? the, it, it, most people don't know what they want. Yeah. So you, yeah, they I don't would know have what to, to ask for. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what exactly. to ask for. So I would normally do a transit if they want to know something specific, something coming up. Then I would do a transit chart. You know, where um, I would look at like the outer planets, like um, Pluto, Jupiter, Mars, the Moon, even the Moon, Moon lasts in every house and every zodiac sign every 2.5 days so today is in gemini the moon i use more for how the day is going to go and how mm. you're feeling of that day and that helps a lot of people because mm -hmm. then you know how how to take on the day you know if, if it's a slow day then you're going to you know take it easy relax if, it, if today is a day of gemini so what is gemini gemini is all about communication off the wall ideas that that's what Gem Gemini is. So mm -hmm. how to use this day to better yourself. So to your advantage, to your advantage. Yeah. yeah. So basically what you would do is, you know, communicate with your partners like, Hey, I, you know, I have all these ideas. You write down all the ideas, you communicate, you mm -hmm. express those ideas with your partner. And then you get on the phone, you communicate by the, by the computer, mm -hmm. by the phone, by pigeons, <laughs> whatever form of communication you want, you'll, you'll use yeah. it today. I mean, there's definitely days that I feel more creative than others. There's definitely days that I'm like, I can't stop with ideas and you write them down and, you know, all that stuff. And there's, there's days that you're like, oh, I can even like think. <laughs> like, you know. So you mentioned about partner. Do you think that everyone that has a partner should check out their partner's chart? Yes. In order to like do their little spy Are we gonna make action it? <laughs> on, you know, what's going on with this person and their transits and their sextiles and their There you, you know, go with charm. that word again. <laughs> I love that word. And and that is now like, what you think it means. <laughs> I know, but I like it. I um, liked it. And then that way it helps them better interact with their partner. Yes. A really good astrologer will not need your partner's date of birth, time, and location. They will just use your chart to see what's going on with everybody else around your life. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, really, it, they're in your life. So you don't really need another chart to, you know. Well, hold on there. <laughs> I'm going to have someone to. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole different version of spying. So a really good astrologer would grab your chart and see how your partner's doing from just viewing your chart. Mm. Now, you can get your partner's chart to see how well he communicates. How does he um, show love and affection? You should know this, but the chart yeah. will confirm. You should see if, if he's in depression, if he's going struggling through some things that he's not telling you. That's a, a good way to look at your, your partner's chart. Hmm. So should you tell your partner that you're like Negative. charting him, <laughs> charting him or her charting? I don't think you should. I mean, that's just the same way as like, well, let me see your phone and or I'll check your phone behind your back. Like, no, would you tell him? Oh my goodness. This is another <laughs> episode, another I think, show. because this is like borderline invasion of privacy. <laughs> Forget drive-by, social media drive-bys. This is like, this is the way to go. You, you don't even need, you, you don't even need his like date of birth or time of birth or anything. You can definitely see if that person's cheating on you. Woo! And you can see it from your own chart too. Oh my God. I need to do this chart. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, do you recommend people do this like on a daily basis, like check your chart every day. You know, like those people that don't, they don't leave the house if they don't check like the horoscope for the day. Do you agree with that? Okay. Well, horoscopes is basically based on your sun sign. Okay. So it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, you got to remember the whole picture. No, it's not the whole picture. And it remember it's being thrown as a general thing and only based on your sun sign. So I have a client who always tells me she's a Leo sun with a ascendant Scorpio and she listens to the horoscopes. She always listens to Leo and then she listens to Scorpio and she's mm. like, well, 
I resonate more with the Scorpio. And I'm always telling her, you need to rise or you need to evolve to your sun sign. You are not your ascendant. Your ascendant is just a part of you. It's just a mass, but that's not you. Mm -hmm. You're trying to resonate with something because you, that's what, how, what you feel. But at the end of the day, you really need to evolve to your son. Mm -hmm. And her son is Leo. So I'm constantly telling her, you know, you need to get out of the shadows and come into the light. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Scorpio is more of um undertone um hidden while leo needs to be out in the sun they represent the sun so they need to be shining you need to and th this person is very scared well leos are also lions mm -hmm. but they can be scaredy cats so this person is also very scared of mm. shining in their own light so that's why they tend to go more with the scorpio but i'm constantly telling them you need to evolve to your sun uh -huh. that's where you came into this life to evolve into your mm -hmm. sun you came to shine time to shine now and they're I'm scared. A, I'm a self-confessed, like, you know, horoscope, astrology, natal chart junkie. Like, I've always, you know, been into that, Sagittarius. But, yeah, whenever I listen to, like, the horoscopes, like, on YouTube or whatever, they always say, this doesn't resonate with you. I always listen to just my, what is it, my sun sign? Your sun sign, yes. Um, but they always say, if this doesn't resonate with you, check out your ascendant or, like, your Venus. Or your moon sign. Yeah. Your moon? Yeah, they always say that. I never do because then that's like, oh my god, like, that's too many people. Like, <laughs> that's a lot of like, too many <laughs> listening to a lot. <laughs> but you you want to li also listen to your moon sign because mm -hmm. your moon is your habits. It's how you feel. It's how you comfort yourself. So you also want to see your moon. But at the end of the day, what your sun sign is in this lifetime, that's what you came to evolve. Mm -hmm. So you need to do what your sign is. So if you're Sagittarius, you need to study. You need to travel. You need to philosophize. If you're a Taurus, check, 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 check. you need to acquire a lot of material things. You need to be sensual. You need to be Ooh, sextile. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I always get a lot that, yes, that Taurus is very materialistic. Yeah. But then I'm not. Like, I like to have nice things and I like my house to look a certain way, you know, but that's my hard earned cash money mm -hmm. you know and me sweating to get what i want to get but like i could i'm not materialistic so how see, does that like other things influence but i don't see materialistic in the bad sense i mean that you like to be safe financially you like to yes. like you know that's how i see it but a lot of and people that you're use good it that with way. money that you're good with money that you're good at making money at keeping mm -hmm. it at investing or you know holding on to your money not be wasteful that's how i see Taurus, not necessarily oh, well, materialistic in the good, bad sense. That's a good um, uh, to way me, to see us. But to me, it's people, actually the yeah. opposite. Like you're not materialistic in the sense that you like to have things just because you want them or they're too expensive. On the contrary, mm -hmm. I think you're very frugal, frugal. Mm -hmm. a good savvy saver, a savvy purchaser. Like you don't, you don't buy something on impulse. Me, Sagittarius, forget it. It's like I charge it. Got, do, done. You know, Dali. I love. I like it. I got it. Like Ariana Grande for sure. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And then I'd be like, oh, God, why did I get that? I, I know. I'm always that. waiting for the sale. And I'm returning it because I feel guilty. I'm always waiting for the sale. But that's and not, I'm yeah, like, exactly. I'm waiting for the sale. Exactly. And when this thing goes on sale, I'm going to get it. Yeah. And then I have a coupon on top of the sale. So <laughs> then for like, me, it's like, if I wait for it, it's not going to be there. So let me just get it now. <laughs> no, I take my chances. I'm a little bit of a gambler. <laughs> well, you are absolutely right, Leslie, about Taurus, it's not about the, I think the word materialistic is used in a negative connotation. Yeah. But everything you said about Taurus, that is exactly what Taurus is. And Taurus, it's not about having the material things, but it's about the possession. They like to possess. So I had um, an attorney who was a Taurus and he treated his family like possession. And not because he was like, not that he was mean or, you know, no good or anything. It's just that anything that belong to him like he felt like all those people belong to him so he treated them as a possession but it wasn't a bad thing a lot of people would be like oh that's terrible no like his wife was his possession his stepson was his possession even i became a possession because i became close to him so he treated mm -hmm. me like a possession but he treats his possessions with a lot of care and a lot to of to be safe sa and, to be safe yeah, yeah that, so they surround themselves with all these material things for that safety you guys are all about safety, but you guys move a little slow for me sometimes. <laughs> I'm not slow. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so going back to the whole 
um, charting people. I understand that you charted us in some <laughs> way or another. Yes. Would you care to share? <laughs> Jerry okay. is caring. So one of the things that I saw for the both of you, mm -hmm. and now I understand what, where this dynamic, why this dynamic works so well. So you're, so Leslie, you're a lot of, you have a lot of fire and air in your chart, yeah. but you lack a lot of water and earth. So one of the things I recommend for you is doing a lot of things like um, drinking a lot of water. Two. Which is something I don't do, to be honest with you. I don't drink a lot of water. Okay. okay. I drink. <laughs> I drink water all day, every day. I love water. I'm a water advocate. <laughs> and it's funny because I lack a lot of water in my chart. So I drink lots of water, even if I don't want to. But I, I love water. But I drink it because I know what I lack in my chart. Now you, Jeanette, on the other hand, you have a lot of earth and water mm. in your chart. But, but you lack fire and air. Earth. Yes. Oh, Lord. You lack the fire in the air. So that means that I you... lack the sextile. <laughs> in other words, we have no sextile. <laughs> Hence why we're here on a Sunday morning recording. Because <laughs> there was no sextile Saturday night. We were not sextiling yesterday. We were not sextiling last night or this morning or any other day for that or matter. Friday night. There TMI. Was no sextiling. <laughs> Now, did you do like, um, you know, like a couple, like uh, what you call like a synergy or whatever? Like, did you combine your charts? Um, no, I That's did not. That's for the next episode. No, I, I did not. I, I looked at your charts individually. Okay. And that's one of the things that popped out on, on each of your charts is that whatever you lack, Leslie, um, Jeanette provides it for you and so vice like versa. The perfect couple. We're so mates. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you can be full of ideas and all about action, and she can help you plan and and solidify those ideas. Mm -hmm. And and you can also have all these um, put things into action, but she can give you the ideas. She, you both complement each other in that aspect, which is very very good. Like yeah. cafe with leche and leche That's with right. cafe. We go together like peas in a pod. <laughs> For you, Leslie, one of the things I saw, um, I'm going to touch on Jupiter, is um, you're going to be traveling until all the way into October. So you already Ooh. mentioned to me uh, behind the scenes mm -hmm. that you were already traveling in June. In and June. And in October, too, actually. In October. Yeah. So, and, the, and I think that you're going to be traveling not only in Florida, but, like, far away. Like, I, I don't remember what other traveling you have for Well, in October, on. I'm going to go to New York. Yeah. I'm planning on going to New So that one's a long trip yeah. ahead. For you, Jeanette, um, what I'm seeing is uh, you have Jupiter in your sixth house. Oh, by the way, Leslie, you have Jupiter transiting now your ninth house. So that's why you're going to see a lot of tra um, traveling. Not only that, but you should be seeing a lot of, um, I don't know, in your, in your job, but you should see some cases uh, finally coming to fruition and, you know, Settling or settling, and maybe even having to go to court. Okay, like more than usual, but Ooh, that, okay. that you'll see that more. As for you, Jeanette, um, your Jupiter's transiting in your sixth house, so that means you're overwhelmed with a lot of work. Well, you should be overwhelmed with a lot of projects, with work, but that's a good thing because that means a lot of income into your into economy, your pocket. into your pocket. So, what about if I'm like doing a lot of work in my dreams? What does this mean? <laughs> Does this mean good stuff because of Jupiter in my sixth house? I think that's another episode. We need like a dream an we analyst. We, dream, we need a that's dream interpreter. Another. Yeah, we need to do a, a dream episode. Mm. Well, with your moon in Scorpio, um, I've told you this in the past, your moon in Scorpio, it, it's very psychic and you're very in tune with that. So you sometimes I feel like you either get visions in your dreams you probably sit here and you can get a vision or people talk to you and you're already being alerted to certain events in your life or like what to be careful or you know even good things so that scorpio moon helps you very be helps you be very intuitive and very psychic hmm. i think my moon is in gemini am i right your moon is in gemini so today is all about your day because the moon is in Gemini today. <laughs> so it's all about, so you do very well with multitasking. You're very good with yeah. words. Um, you know, you can, and you're very good at it. And, and 
you can probably bring words in by bringing money. Like you can probably you could probably be a good salesperson. Oh, God. <laughs> you could sell to women as well because hmm. the moon is also representative as a women and the masses. So you you can talk to women in a in a good way where they're going to be like, oh yeah, I totally understand what you're saying, and and you can get them, you can sell them something. Hmm. By okay. using your words. I wouldn't, you know, I didn't, I never consider myself like a good salesperson. Or at least it's not something that I enjoy. But at least not to like make it as a living. A but I guess. Extra I guess things career. change. Yeah, mm-hmm. things change in your natal chart. <laughs> what other good stuff is in there? Um, Talk about love. 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 Love, love, love. love. Are we going to be sex styling anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. Let's cut to the chase. Okay. Well, Leslie. Yes. You, and I'm, this is now working with other um, asteroids in the chart. So currently you have Juno in the fourth house. So once it moves into your fifth house, there is an opportunity that you'll meet someone. And your fifth house is Ooh. all about um, love and relation. It's not about the marriage. It's more about your love relation. It's the, it's the, the noviazgo. Okay. What, what they like to say. Okay. The, 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 the courting. The, the courting. yeah. Yeah. So you have a very good opportunity coming up now when Juno moves into your fifth house. When who? What? I'm sorry. When what? When the astro Juno. Juno. Moves into your fifth house. Juno. Right now it's in. <laughs> <laughs> but when is that? When is that going to happen? In June? Le, no, I think it's going to happen <clears throat> um, later this year. Like once it moves into your fifth house. I'll have to see exactly what the transit is, but it's coming up. So once that Juno moves up into that fifth house, go, go get it on dating apps, go out, go, even go to the market, supermarket. You'll meet someone. You're bound to meet someone. I got to like, you know, you just get, out get my hair did and all that stuff. Not yes. even. I find sometimes that when you look your worst, that's when the guys come and talk to you. Yes. Yeah. Horrible. Don't get your hair did, girl. <laughs> put it up in a bun. Put some lip gloss on. I just need to be out of the house. Just make sure your nails just, and your many op- petties on point. That's it. <laughs> just and put be, some perfume. Um, just be open for um, that energy because that's what the energy is Oh, honey, is I'm open. <laughs> the energy, that's what the energy is calling to, um, for that fifth house. So there is a possibility you'll meet someone, but you have to be open to the energy. That, that's yes. where your free will comes in. Because yes. you could just stay home. And, exactly, yes. yes, yes. And like my mother always says, ¿Qué tú te piensas? Que te van a venir a tocar la puerta. Negative. Get out of the house. At least open the door, people. At yeah. least just open the door. <laughs> Leave the door open. Let the somebody in. Will come in <laughs> along with the somebody. Um, for you, Jeanette, you have Jupiter right now transiting your sixth house, which is already in October. It's going to be transiting into your seventh house, which means it's a perfect time to meet someone and to basically start. I'm not going to say that you're going to you have that possibility of like meeting someone right now and getting married next year. Like that's the possibility. I Damn. believe. I believe. I believe. Damn. That, that is the possibility. But. It's all really up to you, and you have to now be open for that energy so you, so those events can happen. If not, you'll still be able to meet someone, but you, again, like I told Leslie, Get out you of have house. to be able to. <laughs> I have to actually leave my house. Leave Let the, the draft house. in. Let the draft in. <laughs> La ventanas. Just, just stand at the door. How about yeah. that? Oh, Lord. It could that's be the mailman. Creepy. You know, it could be anybody. Yeah, that's creepy. So Oops, Stand and, at the door. <laughs> He's waiting. <laughs> Penelope. <laughs> Penelope. What's what's the girl with the long hair? Le- Rapunzel. Rapunzel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god. This is taking a turn um, for the worse. <laughs> for you, I feel like you could meet someone in your um social setting or at work, whatever you may do. You okay. know, that's a good possibility where you can meet someone. Mm-hmm. And maybe a client. What about in the supermarket? <laughs> you need to go to the supermarket because you're always running out of things. Dude, I'm always in the supermarket. I never see like any a cute tourist. guys in the supermarket. Like a good tourist that you are. Yeah, because I'm always cooking. Because <laughs> I have to feed my people. <laughs> so what what else do you see? Like, watch out for this. or Well, for you, Leslie, um, one of the things is you, in the next two years, until next year, you have a lot of, I see you working very hard at your projects, at work, but don't fret. 
there will be a nice reward at the end of the next year. Thank God. You know, but you got to work at it. You got to work. Know, you got to work. You want at a Maserati? It. You got to work, bitch. That's yep. what Britney says. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or Mary Rich, one of the two. <laughs> um, it's it's very it's a very hard time for you in that mm-hmm. sense of work and um, your social settings. It's it's very difficult, but at the end of, the, of next year, it'll get better. It you'll have a nice reward. So you know you may get that recognition that you've been wanting at work, or you know that raise. Mm-hmm. It's coming, and not only that, but with your side project as well, you'll see the fruition already cool. coming. For you, Jeanette, you have a, a good opportunity to be super creative with artistically and with that moon in scorpio and it's trining that neptune fantastic go all out with creativeness Woo-hoo. so get creative um you know and just jot down the ideas i'm sure just even spending time with leslie you'll be full of energy or not only energy but a lot of ideas that you'll be able to concrete make them into concrete solid plans yes we always have a lot of ideas <laughs> bouncing back and forth <laughs> many 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 ideas that will be coming shortly on on the downfall um no. people no <laughs> the end that's it i don't thank I, you for listening thank you Goodbye. thank you um i shall not be listening to any negative energy thank you i only vibrate high thank you very much this is what's good about the NATO targets. You got to listen to the bad and the negative. I do not want anything negative. But you know what? I, I totally love that about you because um, there was an NFL player that I recently heard that I was diagnosed with cancer. I don't know who it is, but I just know it was a, a football player. Was diagnosed with cancer, went home, and he's like, I don't want to use that word in this house. And because he was trying to vibrate positive, mm-hmm. you know, he came out of cancer. He beat he, it. He beat it. And then the next two years, he was playing again. But in the house, you couldn't use the word cancer because it's a negative, mm-hmm. you know. And anything negative in the house could not be said. Nothing negative could be playing in the house. Like, that mentality was not acceptable at the house. Everything had to be positive. So it's good that you say that you just want to keep it all positive. Yes. You know, I smudge people. I smudge and I <laughs> meditate and I vibrate high and everybody else should too. Exactly. I agree with that. Positive Definitely energy. positive energy and positive thoughts. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. 100%. I can so moving forward. Yeah. What's the biggest misconception that people have about astrology? Well, there's a lot, but um, one of them is they think it's a religion. Okay. It's not a religion, guys. This is not something that you pray or or Mm -hmm. idolize nothing of that sort do people think that you can use astrology for brujeria Hmm. i'm sure they can and you can and what's funny is that you can see and it's not funny but you can see if brujeria was done on you through the astrology chart through your needle chart yes Mm. um for for example in my um chart you can see a lot of you so I'm much. <laughs> so in my chart, um, when I was little, in my chart I have Pluto in fourth. So that means fourth is the fourth house is all about your house, where you live, your family, your you know your environment. Mm-hmm. So I have Pluto in that house. Well, when I was little, somebody put brujeria in my house. Mm. Like. My mom found it outside in oh the um, in the bushes. Like, it was two muñecos, like, facing, not facing, facing away each other, amarrados, and it was um, put for my parents. For them to get a divorce. Yeah. yeah oh. That's big time brujería action. Big wow. time. And, but if you notice, that scene in my chart. Why? Because the brujería was done in mm-hmm. my environment at my house, so that was seen in the chart automatically. Wow. So, Since... Okay, so let's say in that kind of environment, if they saw it in your chart, then it would appear in your mother's and your father's as well, right? Yes. So anything, let's say, that's major in your life, would that also appear in your family's chart, in your mother's or your father's chart or your siblings? Yes. It's funny that you mentioned that because I had an aunt come up to me and say, hey, can you look at my daughter's chart, see if she's going to get pregnant? And I told her, She's going to have a baby next year. And she goes, well, but do you think she'll get pregnant this year? Right? <laughs> and I was like, the baby's being born next year. That's how I said it to her. 
And in her mind, it was more like, is she going to get pregnant? Like, the whole thing, I'm right here telling her, it's the baby will be born next year. Sure enough, the baby was born next year. But that's how literal sometimes astrology can be, is, you know, you're saying the baby will be born next year. Mm-hmm. The baby was born next year. I, I couldn't see a pregnancy. It's not that I saw, didn't see a pregnancy. I just saw a baby next yeah. year, you know. So she, she, but she was very focused on pregnancy. Like she going to get pregnant. She's going to yeah. get pregnant. Well, yeah, she wasn't hearing the outcome that, yes, yeah. the baby's coming. Yeah. Well, is that why? Because astrology just tells you the outcome, but not necessarily, you know, like how can you see, okay, I see you being pregnant. Yeah. You don't really see that. You see, you're going to have three kids. You, you, can you know, see know, like the you pregnancy. see it like that or you do. You, you, do you can pregnancy. see the, pre- you can see the pregnancy, okay. but for some reason that day, whatever I was seeing was just, I saw a baby next year. You were seeing already the future, not necessarily. Yeah, like for some reason, I, I just was already seeing ahead. But again, like, the, and this is another misconception. Astrology is not to be used as a, it can be used as a predictive measurement, but you don't use it for that because, again, it's it's a bunch of possibilities on your chart. Mm-hmm. So what you want to use it for is a guidance. So if you're watching TV and looking at the weather, and you're like, oh, well, let me see what's going to, if it's going to rain this weekend. Right. So you plan according. So if it's the weatherman says, oh, it's going to rain all weekend. What are you going to do? Stay in your house? No, you got to run errands. You're going to grab your umbrella and run your errands. So that's what astrology is. It's really reading the report as to if it's going to rain or not and Mm -hmm. how you should plan your life accordingly. But it's a possibility. It's not it may not happen because at the end of the day, everybody has a free will. And we all know meteorologists are always wrong anyway. So it doesn't matter. (laughs) I think if it's gonna rain and the sun comes out and it's like shit, I canceled my plans to the beach. Mother and the- <laughs> ever. But you prepared yourself, right? Yeah, but it sucks because I wanted to go to the beach and now this damn rain is not so coming. Why can't you be spontaneous, Taurus, and just go to the beach? I know my my daughter, and I'm really good at this. Actually, I'm getting better. I should say, <laughs> my daughter tells me, "Mom, you know she's nine. You have to." Get out of your comfort zone. You have to be more adventurous. Live a little. This is a nine-year-old telling me this. And I'm like, Lauren. From the mouths of babes. Oh, Lord. I'm like, yes, I know. I'm very adventurous. I'm trying to be more adventurous every day. Like, please give me a break. This is coming from an Aries child who is a pioneer. Uh And being the first. She will be the first to do a lot of things in your family. She's just meant to do it. (laughs) Hallelujah. But she always has a direction. Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer are all about direction. So they're like considered the north, west, south, west, Mm -hmm. east signs. And those, if you think about it, when you look at a compass, north, you, it's a direction. It's So mm-hmm. they all, those four signs are always all about direction. They always have something to go towards. They're, they're very much about action, and they will go to that direction. So, yes, your Aries sign daughter is all about let's go, let's do it first and everything. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> she better get chop, chop. She better get to it. She'll get you out of your comfort zone for sure. <laughs> yes. So we've been hearing a lot lately, like, oh, Mercury is in retrograde and this is in retrograde. And this is why this isn't happening because it's in retrograde. What does a retrograde actually mean? Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> and why does everyone blame everything on the retrograde? Exactly. Blame yeah. it on the re- <coughs> e- 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 retrograde. Okay. So a lot of people are terrified of the retrograde and there's nothing to be scared about the retrograde, any retrograde, whether it's Neptune, whether it's Mercury or re- any of these retrogrades does not mean it's the end of the world, go into hiding. No. It means it's a time for you to review, 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 mm-hmm. review, review, replan, renovate, not put into things into action. So with when Mercury is in retrograde, we Is want- that the only thing that's in retrograde? Because that's like all I hear. Mercury is in retrograde. No. The okay. Neptune is going to be retrograding at the end of this month. Okay. Pluto retrogrades. The only thing, the only signs that don't retrograde really is the sun and the moon. Okay. And retrograde really means it's taking a step back, but it, it's an illusion in the sky. It looks like it's going backward, but it's really not. It's just, what do we want to do when Mercury is in retrograde? We don't want to buy electronics. If you're going to buy an electronic, you have to purchase it as secondhand. Um, nothing new. 
you want to review all of your work. If you're working on motions, if you're working on letters, you want to type it, you want to read it, you want to print it, read it again, read it again, because you're going to find a lot of mistakes. And then you're going to read it again and review it. And it's a lot of reviewing and during that time period. It's not that, and I wouldn't make big decisions during that time period because that, again, that time period is to reflect. So it's like not a time for action. Not a time for it's action. It's a time for reflection. For planning. And just wait it out. And Yeah. Um, if you're buying a house, I would not. I mean, again, you can't stop your life. If you want to buy Correct. a house, I would say sign the contract. But before you sign it, read it five million times and then sign it. There's chances that the house, the sale of the house will delay, but... You, mm -hmm. you can't stop living your life. You have Correct. to keep on going. Just I would just say, just review, review, review. Make sure you're doing your inspections, your due diligence. Mm -hmm. And then, but there will be a delay with the house, with purchasing the house. So is there always some sort of planet in retrograde? Not always. Okay. There's times that everything is moving forward and everything is great. And there's other times that you have like four different planets mm -hmm. all retrograding. And, and can it be like, because I've heard like, throughout the year i've heard multiple times mercury is in retrograde or no or mercury. and how long does it last okay so mercury retrogrades three times a year so oh, we had okay. so we had it i believe sometime in january and what does in retrograde mean like it's not moving is that what it means it's, it's just being held it's just no it's an illusion in the sky that it looks like the planet is moving backwards oh but it's really, okay 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 but it, it's not it's just an illusion okay moving backwards okay so definitely not moving forward just things are going get stale and stagnant or whatever yes okay so that's that's why i say it's a perfect time to sit back review reevaluate mm -hmm. reflect everything with the re's that's the time period mm -hmm. that you want to do okay so if you're yes. thinking of yeah. getting a divorce hold on oh no if you're thinking of getting married hold on that type yes. of thing yeah making any big commitments or anything like that Getting yes. into a business, hold on, yes. things like that. Just review. For example, back in uh, July, no, January was, um, you know, A-Rod and Jennifer Lopez got um, engaged, mm, right? Mm -hmm. he, Poor <laughs> people, man. They could barely enjoy that thing. Jesus Christ. I mean, I myself posted something like, like what the, with the Canseco posting that thing? Like, oh, my God. Yeah, I was so happy God. for them. I was so, like, and then Jesus. you have the haters. I was like, what the hell is wrong with people? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't even be happy for a second. Okay, so I did, I wrote I wrote a little bit about their engagement. And they had good aspects, however. And, and their sinistry <clears throat> is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I like them together. However, he proposed on a Mercury retrograde. Oh, negative. He did not consult his astrologer. <laughs> Correct. So there may be delays. We're going to see delays with this um, engagement. They may not make it to the altar. Um, um, I, I like them. I like their synastry together. They they complement each other. However, he proposed on a Mercury retrograde. So that means that there will be delays to getting married. There may not be a marriage. Do you see them splitting up, though? Um, I haven't gone that far to check the chart. However, if if she really wants to get, if they both really want to get married, I'd say consult, uh, consult with an astrologer to help you pick out the perfect day mm. so that your marriage can last, so yeah. that your marriage can go smoothly and not end in within a year or an hour, mm. you know? So, but that he proposed on a Mercury retrograde, so there will be delays. Do you, do you, can you see, like, do you believe in, like, people are meant to be together? Like, does that come out in charts? Yes. Um, and it depends on, it, it could be karmatic, uh, karma, mm -hmm. or it could be, um, you know, it's, it's just destined with the nodes. Um, it really depends. Oh, man, that's another whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> See, but this is where you people keep saying free will, and I disagree. Because if you're saying that you're meant to be with someone, but yeah, you're jumping around with your free will, hopping around to different people. At the end of the day, you're going to end up with that person, right? Right. Yeah, but then you, how do you explain people that are like staying in like bad relationships forever? The, I mean, that's just that's that could be also destined. Like you were meant to like. Well, I think I maybe know. that deals with karma too. Like that's like your karm karma debt that you have to pay mm. maybe in this lifetime. I think that's like different. 
Then, it's so interesting. Um, there's a lot. We're going to keep doing this because this is yes. like, there's too much, you know, well, talk, too much stuff to cover. This is astrology and then... This is astrology everything, 101. <laughs> I think everything goes hand in hand, right? So you have astrology and you have your karma and then you have different versions of astrology, let's say, and then you have free will and then you... It's very convoluted yet intertwined. I think that yeah. a lot of it does go hand in hand, mm-hmm. regardless of what people want to say in the in the religious spectrum of it all. It, it does have a huge effect on the way you live, the way you act, whether you know it or not. Well, to answer your question, we all come into this world with contracts with different people. So, you know, mm-hmm. we either abide by those contracts or we don't. And then if we don't, then we come back into this lifetime again with the same person to complete whatever we agreed on back in wherever we were before here. So is that like reincarnation? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, could see re- <laughs> you could see reincarnation in your natal chart as well. Oh. And you could see past lives as well. That's another top. That's another episode. <laughs> but reincarnation, like you could come back as a dog. That's Buddhism. That's another episode. <laughs> How do you... So, okay. Confucius right mm-hmm. now. So, in astrology, reincarnation, you always come back as a person? That's more... Again, astrology is the science of mm-hmm. movements and planets and how they affect that. It's, it's not that it tells you what reincarnation is. It just... It can tell if you've come back from other lives or you've lived other lives. I guess that's the better mm-hmm. terminology. It's, it's whether you've lived other lives or not. Interesting. This is very interesting. <laughs> a lot of food for thought. So then to give a little bit, um, a, a little taste of what's coming up in June for people, like what, what should people watch out for in June? Okay. So June, we have the new moon, June 3rd. So Tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, Monday. Mm-hmm. So that day, what you want to do is write down all of your ideas, everything that you want to put into motion, into concrete solidified foundations on your ideas you write it down right do you mean like a manifestation type of thing it's something like that okay but you write not necessarily what you want to do accomplish that week but like in general like the bigger picture yeah okay and it's it's has more to do with your ideas than than anything else because why because the moon is in gemini and gemini is all about ideas and expressing using your words so you want to jot down all of your ideas write them down in the present and then wait two days like by june 5th 6th start implementing your ideas how are you going to put your ideas into action i say wait two days because the the moon is still new and you don't really want to do in the next two days after the new moon you don't really want to do anything because nothing really moves after the new moon it starts moving the third or fourth day so you want to start jotting down your ideas and then you're going to Put that away or put it somewhere where you can see it because you want to be able to Mm -hmm. get those ideas into action. So Mm -hmm. put them somewhere where you can see it. And then when the full moon comes, you want to burn it and give it to the universe. Okay. And when's the full moon? The full moon is on the 25th, I believe. Let me just double check that. Oh, that's cool. June 17th. So like a bonfire. (laughs) Mm. And it's inside. Bonfiring our, <laughs> our papers. That's a lot of intention. So, new moons are for new beginnings, and okay. full moons are for endings. And I sometimes think that the full moon is sometimes potent than, and, and the energy is more intense than an eclipse. Uh, I've been dumped on a full moon. Mm. So, and that was really bad. Like, did you and, see it coming? No, because I don't. It, as, I should be a better astrologer and look at my chart every single day. No, but that's crazy. Well, as an astrologer, you are encouraged to look at your chart Mm -hmm. every single day because you're learning more about yourself. Okay. And not only that, but you see what, you use more the moon, so you see what the day is coming. So, like, on my stories, every day I'll tell you what the moon is like Mm -hmm. and how how you can um, use those energies to take on the day. Ooh. So, so you want to be seeing, if, if you really want to get to know yourself more, you want to continue to look at your chart every single day. And then as far as eclipses that are coming up, what's an eclipse and why is that important? Eclipse is a time where the moon covers the sun. Things can be hidden or things come to light. And it's the energy is so potent and so strong that 
things eventually end up breaking up in a very volatile, dramatic way, or things that need to be in your life will stay in your life. And that's a time where you'll see a lot of people dying. That's a lot of time where you'll see like... Um, Catastrophic ca- events. Events, exactly. Divorces. You'll see, uh, um, you'll like, see like major things. Like, okay, so one of the things that we'll, we'll probably be seeing is a lot about Brexit. England is Capricorn, and right now Capricorn, Pluto's in Capricorn. And with the eclipses, you know, the eclipses are going to be in those nodes. Of, it's going to be in those zodiac signs. It's going to be in Capricorn and Cancer. So we're going to see a lot in the news about uh, England. Not only that, but we're going to see a lot in the news about us because mm-hmm. the U.S. is a Cancer mm. sun. So we're also going to be seeing a lot of it as well. So those are the things that yeah, are coming countries up. have signs too. Yes, they do. So the, the eclipses are in July. The first one is a solar eclipse July 2nd at 10 degrees, 38 minutes in Cancer. And then the second one is a lunar eclipse in Capricorn. It's between July 16th and the 17th, depending on where you are, Eastern or Central or Western. Um, it'll be on the 16th or 17th, and it's 24 degrees in Capricorn. So those two, whoever signs are in Capricorn and Cancer, those two signs will be extremely affected majorly. Mm-hmm. And then you also have your Libra and your Aries that also will be affected. Those four major signs will be affected more than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And if you have any sign, any planets on those signs, you will be affected, especially if you are within the degrees. Mm-hmm. So it's a very potent time in July, extremely potent, very the dramatic, very mm-hmm. intense, heavy duty. So is it more positive or negative? Um, it's just a lot of changes. The, the, July is calling for a lot of changes. And yeah, you have to make a decision. It, you have to take depends. a direction. It depends. Some some things might seem negative, but then it's like, okay, that's, it needed to happen. You know, like. That's your clean yeah. house, spring cleaning, summer cleaning. Clean house, spring cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a lot of making decisions that you have to take a direction. It's no longer like, well, let me see, sit back and, and let things happen. No, it's mm-hmm. about really making a decision and taking towards a direction, you know, so that, yeah. that's what it's calling. Wow. That's in July. That's and there, there's way more coming up in, in July. But in June, we have uh, Neptune is going to be going retrograde starting June 21st. So you're going to be questioning what is real and what's fantasy. So we want to take a look into that and, and how do we, or we can, whatever we can make from fantasy into a reality. So those that's a good time to reflect in that time period. Thank goodness. So much to think about and so much to, but it's good. You know, I think it's, as a guidance, I think it's a really good tool. Yeah. I love it. I love, I love all of it. Yes. Well, that wraps it up for us today. We'll bring you um, more stuff, you know, as the, I don't know. In future months, I guess, when more we'll, exciting sextile predictions. <laughs> we'll give you a heads up of like what to look for, like yeah. big major events happening in the next few months. I think that's good because then people can get a general idea. Maybe the ones that have never used astrology. And mm-hmm. then you go, you know, you jump on the bandwagon. Yep. Okay, See? Dahlia, as our first guest, you are going to enjoy as our first non, non-Cuban guest. Non-Cuban. <laughs> That's a little racist. Because this is Cafe con Leche, and it's, you know, out of Miami. We're from the 305. We want to uh, do like a little quiz for our guests. Do a little A little quiz. Cuban quiz. Yes. So this is our first quiz for our first guest. So we have a few questions for you because inquiring minds want to know. So drum roll. Yes. What do you prefer? Croquetas or pastelitos? <laughs> oh my God. That's a hard one. Can think and think Cro- about it. Croqueta. Croqueta. Croquetas. Okay. I know you like your ham croquetas, not bacalao. <laughs> give us your give us your best Cuban accent <laughs> for the following. Tell us a piropo in your best Cuban accent. <laughs> I have no idea. Or like a cat call or something, you know, that you you would say in your best Cuban accent. Come on, you could do it. I've heard you. Or just give us your best Cuban accent, period. I'll give you the best Cuban accent. But Go a ahead. Piropo, I have no idea. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, Ali. <laughs> no. 
try again. <laughs> what do you mean? No, that's a good one. That is so typical. Come on. <laughs> you could be more original than that. Yeah, I've heard you. You have it in you. You have the Cuban outside in you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Fail. Insult someone in your best Cuban accent. Oh my god. <laughs> I have no idea. Oye, para afuera. <laughs> Oye, consorte, ¿a ti qué te pasa, Oye. tú? Oye, ven para acá. Te voy a arrastrar como una colcha de trapear. <laughs> <laughs> una colcha de trapear. Is it orange? <laughs> Most likely, yes. <laughs> that a Cuban friend taught me recently. <laughs> well, thank you very much for playing. Uh, how Cuban are you? Yes. <laughs> I <like> that. <laughs> we, yes, I think that's a good name for it. How Cuban are you? With our first guest, Dahlia Madrid. Thank, thank you, you for so playing. much. <laughs> oh my God, that's so hard. <laughs>